Okay. So out of 54 people, I get <laughs> not a whole lot. It's okay. I want to remind everyone who's logged in that most of the time, like 99% of the time, that people that typically log in to my optional sessions do well in the class, like A well. <laughs> FYI. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, start this. And I had a question, uh, which was a really good question regarding uh, lecture notes. Um, a number of professors that teach Chem 300 um, publish their lecture notes. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, um, for a fee at the bookstore, I'm publishing my lecture notes uh, under Canvas, because this is the first time I'm teaching this. So you're going to get all the lecture notes that the other students are getting as well. Only mine are going to be similar, not exactly the same. Um, there are some issues that I that I I don't explain the same way and stuff that I I don't like to use someone else's explanation if I don't like it. So I just do my own. Also, uh, I've decided to. Um, um, since your student homework is not graded, uh, I'm going to be um, uh, doing the problems also in publishing as a separate document. So there will be the worksheet and another document to be worksheet plus answers. Now it's quite long, it's 18 pages long. There's a lot of problems there, but I want to, uh, I'm going to do them myself. I'll do them in handwritten. And I'll do uh, any little cutesy notes or anything like that. So you'll see exactly how things are set up as opposed to just the answer with no setup. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we're only having one uh, lecture this week. Next week, we're going to have two lectures plus a workshop. The workshop is going to go into detail on how to use your calculator. Um, a lot of students, uh, there's, there's some uh, techniques that I'll show you using your calculator that you not, may not be aware of that'll save you steps and accuracy as well. All right, so anyway, let's jump in here. Okay, there any questions before we jump in? Okay, let's do that then. All right. Um, now I'm going to be, <coughs> excuse me, now I, uh, yesterday I mentioned and the day before I mentioned that most of unit one, like 99.9% .9 of it is chapter two. Uh, I mentioned in the exam it's going to be chapter one and two, but it's, it's chapter one is very, um, you can read that on your own and you'll uh, feel comfortable and covering everything. I don't need to spend time lecturing that. It's just, it's just, I don't want to say trivial, but it's just extremely generic. And you should be fine reading it on your own. This is the guts of unit you know, one is chapter two. So I'm going to spend um, my time on chapter two. Okay. Um, notice the title of chapter two is measurement and problem solving. Was that a question? Okay. Uh, one other thing. Um, as I'm going through these notes, um, this is what I'm going to be publishing. This is what I put together here. It'll be a PDF file. It could be more than one PDF file if I cover this in more than one day. Uh, but for sure, you'll be getting a copy of this. Plus, obviously, the uh, video is being recorded. Now, I'm saving the videos on YouTube. And the way it goes, if, I, if any of you have not looked at the uh, recorded video, if you go to modules, in fact, let me just do that really quickly for you. If you go to modules, oh, I don't have it open. If you go to modules, let's see. Oh, no, here it is. No, let me send it. Um, if you go to modules, unit zero, you'll see uh, a link that says video space, uh, class introduction, something like that. When you click on that, it'll go to a page 
in Canvas. And then there's a link on that page and it'll pull in the um, YouTube video. And that's the way all the videos will be saved. Now I'm gonna have additional videos as well, um, but, but for sure that's no more additional videos in unit zero. There'll be additional videos on unit one. Okay, all right, so let's jump into chapter two. Does that make sense? I don't know, hopefully it, it made some semblance of sense here. All right, um, now in life in general, um, we talk about qualitative differences and quantitative differences. Qualitative di differences are usually descriptive, um, usually you, you know, with no numbers. And uh, uh, if it's not uh, a science or something like that, usually it's considered uh, subjective, considered judgmental, whatever. But anyway, there's no quantity or numbers associated with it. Quantitative means that there is there are numbers associated with it and usually some sort of measurement to that. Uh, there's something called metrics and metrics. Metrics are used for quantitative measurement. For example, they'll ask you, you know, we're talking about um, um, COVID deaths um, for the for the month of um, July. And you first thing you'd say, well, what's the metric you're using? And then you'd say, well, we're looking at the number of deaths um, labeled COVID, um, not associated with any other disease or something like that anyway. But the metric is the quantitative aspect of how the measurement is done. Okay, um, in science and engineering, whenever I say science, I'm talking about engineering as well. Um, frequently we have extremely small numbers and extremely large numbers and those extremely small numbers and extremely large numbers are frequently awkward. And um, for example, we're gonna be in a little while talking about something called Avogadro's number. And this is what Avogadro's number is. Oops, let's see here. That's Avogadro's number. That is a little awkward. So what they do is they put it in scientific notation. I'm sorry, Mr. Ferguson, but we can't see what you wrote. You can't see this? Oh, we're currently looking at one of your folders for chapter two. Really? Um, all righty then. <laughs> Let's try this again. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Wonder what happened, huh? Okay. Um, well, I just made a comment about metrics. But, you, but this number here, this is called Avogadro's number. And you can see that, that there's a whole bunch of, there are 21 zeros there past the two. And we're gonna talk a lot about this number uh, in the coming uh, weeks, but um, so it's a really awkward number. So scientific notation can express it like this. And that is much more um, uh, significantly less awkward than 602 with 21 zeros. Um, and then you can go the other extreme, um, the mass of electron is something incredibly small with a bunch of zeros in the beginning of it. So scientific notation makes awkward numbers less awkward. Now I'm not to say that that's not an awkward number, but it's a better number than this number. Okay. Now, so it's important technique to be able to go from one to the other. Okay, um, so all scientific exponentiation or ex scientific number notation um, has two parts. It has one part that is a number from one to almost 10, but not 10. Um, and then there's an, a, a base 10 number with an exponent and that exponent is a whole number. 
It's really important. It's a whole number. Now, in algebra, you can talk about decimal numbers there and all this stuff. But as far as scientific notation goes, it is a whole number. And it can be either negative or positive. OK? And that's this guy here. So all scientific notation numbers have two parts. This part here, from 1 to 9.999999999999, but not 10. And then we have the exponential part, which is 10 to the something, which is a positive or negative whole number. OK? All right. How many decimal points, we're going to get into this in a little while, determines the precision. So that's more precise than this. So with scientific notation, that imparts precision as well. And the precision is in the first number, not the second one. It's the number from one to nine point blah, blah, blah. blah. OK, so how do you convert from one to the other? OK, so if, if you see a number like that, this here, OK, where is the decimal point in that number? The way it's written. It's OK to answer, you guys. <laughs> would, would it be between the one and the six? No, where on the number I underlined, where's the decimal point? The far end of the zeros on the right? Yeah, exactly, it's right here. So, so if a decimal number is, if a decimal point is not listed, far right, okay? Far right. Okay, now we have to convert this thing. Let's ignore this for a second here. We have to convert this thing, awkward number, right? Ugly, ugly, ugly. Let's convert that. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna convert that uh, awkward number to scientific notation. Now the deal is, um, that is a big number. Big numbers Have positive exponents. What do you think little numbers have? Negative. Exactly, negative exponents. Okay. All right. So we we do the conversion. Our exponent up here. Now, if it's a big number, that exponent has got to be positive. If it's a little tiny number with lots of zeros with a decimal point, it's got to be negative. Okay, that's important after you're all done. Now, in my class, I always, after you're done, you look at the thing is what you just did, the conversion, the, the uh, multiplication process, the whatever process you went through, does that make sense? Okay, so this is a big number, right? That thing is a quadrillion, quadrillions, or whatever. It's giant. So that means it's going to have a positive exponent. So when we're all done converting, and you look at your, 10 to the whatever, make sure it's positive and not negative. OK, so we need to convert this to a number first from 1 to 10. Okay, that's going to be this guy here between the right there. That'll be a number from 1 to 10, which is, which is going to be 1.672. And again, because this number is a lot bigger than 1, it's going to have a positive exponent. Well, what is the exponent going to be? We're just going to count now from that decimal point, where the new decimal point between 1 and 6, how many over? 25. 
Well, let's see. Okay, keep that number in mind, 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> yes, 25. Now, what is that? Equal sign. Equal sign. That means these two numbers have to be equal. Because all we're doing is we're playing games with the number. We're not changing its value. We're just renaming it. We're putting on a mask. So that means they have to be the same number. Same number. Okay. Now, um, a quick check. Um, is this number bigger than 10? Yes, it's a lot bigger than 10. That means our decimal. I mean, our exponent, our exponent here has got to be positive, and it is. Okay, did you guys follow that? Um, I, I just have a tiny question. So I understand the reason why we have the exponent as 25, because we skipped 25 spaces. I just wanted to know uh, what the 10 was for again in that in the scientific notation. I mean, this here? That 10? Yes, that 10. Um, that represents how many times we're multiplying the 1.67. Okay. 10 to the 25th. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's 10 with 25 zeros up there. <laughs> we're multiplying it. But it's less awkward. I'm not saying it's not awkward number, but it's significantly less awkward than the number on the left. So that's a giant number. Let's look at a smaller number, a really tiny number. Now I want you to notice the way this number is written here. I um, have taught chemistry for nursing students for 18 years. In the health field, you never write a number less than one without a zero in the front. The reason for that is, if you write a zero in the front, you know that's a valid decimal point. If there's no zero in the front, you don't know if that is a dot on the paper because of, because of uh, poor uh, paper. It could be a dot of water that splashes or it could be a legitimate decimal point. You really don't know. As soon as you put a zero in the front, you know it's a valid decimal point, okay? So in my class, you are to put all numbers less than one with a zero point, okay? You will never go wrong in anyone's science class. And if you choose to go in the health field, if you're pre-med, for example, you would be required to do this. So it's a good habit to get into, zero point. And you will find that I always do that, always. And let me add this little caveat to that. In the United States, we've had numerous deaths in hospitals because of prescription errors, because that zero was not properly placed. And people thought the zero, I mean, people thought the decimal point was a dot of ink when it was real decimal. And, this, and the patient got 10 to 100 times more drugs or treatment than they should have, and they died, including children. Up where I used to live in Washington State, uh, we had Swedish. Um, um, the hospital was treated many, many, many children, and we had deaths up there from this problem. So it's a legitimate technique that I would, uh, I'm going to want you to follow. After my class, obviously you can do whatever you want, but it's a really good habit to get into. All professors will accept zero point as a number. No one will fault you for that. Okay, so how do we express this guy? Awkward number in terms of a less awkward scientific notation number. Well, it's the same old thing here. All right, let's go over here. That number needs to be between 1 and 9.999, which is going to be 3.33. And is that number less than 1? Yes. That means that the exponent needs to be negative. 
Okay, and what is that number? Well, let's move it over here to make it 3.3. .3. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah. So 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative ninth. Okay. There's one other number I'm going to put down here. Um, and we get to in a minute here. Okay. Um, and we've got a number like this. Now, in my class, um, I want you to convert to scientific notation if you feel the number is awkward. Okay. So, in your term, in your mind, is 4000.0678 awkward? Just let me know what yes. gut level feel. Okay, I got one awkward. Two awkward. <laughs> I think it's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's to be really bad. honest with you, it can go either way. But on a test, if I said convert this to scientific notation, we do the same old thing. We need to convert this to a number from one to 10. But when you need, let me back up here. This is real important. Well, let me, let's do this, the conversion first. I don't want to come back to this um, uh, awkwardness. Okay, so um, that number is going to be four point something. So it's going to be four point. Yeah, four zero. Okay. And we're looking at one, two, three. And remember, since this number is greater than, greater than 10, it's going to have a positive exponent and it's going to be. Um, what, uh, three. Okay, so tell me again, which is more awkward in your mind? The on the right. Table. Yeah, I think it's more awkward. So on a test, I give you a problem, and uh, now this goes through the whole semester. I give you a problem, and you you come up with this is the answer of the four thousand point zero six seven six seven eight. And um, and some of you put down the one on the left, some of you put down the one on the right, and who is correct? Both. Both, yeah. In my class, I don't think, I think the one on the left is, is less awkward than the one on the right. But if you were to convert it to the one on the right, it's still the same number, remember? It's equal. That means you don't, it, it's fine. I will not change it. Just because someone has a mindset as what's awkward or not awkward doesn't mean that you have the same mindset. Now, this number here, that clearly needs to be scientific notation. Same with that. That's a pretty ugly number. But this 4,000 number isn't, isn't so bad. So it's okay in my class, unless I ask you to convert it to scientific notation or vice versa, that that number is okay. Okay, does that make sense? My class is reasonable. I want you to, the reason why we're doing all this stuff is to make stuff, you know, awkward and less awkward and the process is the scientific notation process. But when you get an answer, I want you and your mind to, to convert it to something that's the most reasonable, the less, the less awkward. Now look at the one I put on there, 4.5, okay? This is, this is a question, let's convert that to scientific notation. And this is kind of tricky. Is this a number from one to one to 9.999? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's already there. So what do we put for the exponent? Did we move the decimal point? Yes or no? Zero. No, it would, it would be zero. Yeah, we didn't move it. So that means we moved it zero places. Now, any number to the zero power is one. So really we're saying 4.5 times 10 to the one is really what that says. But this is scientific notation. Now, which is awkward, the one on the right or the one on the left? Right. For sure, the one on the right. That's stupid. Unless, unless I gave you a question on the test, convert this to scientific notation. But in terms of, if you, if you work through a word problem and you get 4.5 as an answer, you convert that to scientific notation. I will, I will not mark it wrong, but I'll give you, I'll put a sad face on it. <laughs> okay. That's just, you know, keep things reasonable. 
Okay. Um, so now let's go the other way. Let's start with scientific notation and then convert that to a decimal number. Okay. So remember what I said the negative exponent means it's smaller than one. So that means we're having zeros out front. How many zeros out front? Well, write the number six. Four. It is four, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna move it five places. So one, two, three, four, five. You put zeros there. Okay, you need to move that five places. So it's going to be one less than the exponent. Okay, so we have a positive exponent now. That means it's going to be a big number. So we write this, and then usually what I do is, is rewrite that. It doesn't have all the little squiggly marks on it. Um, so we write the number down 1.78978. And we're going seven places. Now we need to make that 1.78 number bigger by seven places, seven decimal places. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the name of the game with scientific notation going from back and forth between that and the decimal number is, is we're looking at the exponent and moving decimal places. And if it's a negative decimal point, we want to make that number smaller. It's a positive one, we want to make it bigger. Okay. So on our calculator, Calculators are dumb. When I mean dumb, they are really dumb. Okay? They don't understand, some are more sophisticated than others, but some of the less expensive ones are really dumb and they don't understand the concept of proper scientific notation. So looking at this number here, you get that on your calculator, that is a, not a properly um, uh, set up scientific notation number because this number here is not 1 to 9.9999. It's a heck of a lot bigger. So we need to convert it then to 1 between 1 and 9.9999. So that means we're going to have to move this decimal 1, 2, 3, 4. That means that's got to be 4 bigger or 8. And again, these numbers are equal. Oh, um, Mr. Ferguson, I have a question. Because we had to convert that, it wouldn't be negative instead since we're moving it back? If, if it's negative, we're going to end up, remember the negative numbers now are less than one. Oh, right. Is this number? Yeah, right. So is, if we do that, we're going to end up with this number being less than one. And this is a big number. So remember, I always say afterwards, check it. Is this reasonable? And that wouldn't be reasonable. Always backtrack and go, hmm, this makes sense. Okay. I want you to rely upon your, your gut level feel about numbers. Is this big, too big, or is it too small? Okay, back and forth. Okay. All right, let's look at this guy here. Problem there as well. Okay. So we need to convert that to a 2.1111 number. So that means we're moving this now instead of the right we're moving it okay we're making it smaller by three places that means this has to be made smaller by three places as well now remember we're on the number line that means that's a negative two now because we moved it three places
be this guy here. We need to move this. That's one, two, three, four places to bring it to 7.8. But because we're now, remember, I said earlier, these numbers are equal. All we're doing is playing games with naming these things. So we can't change the value by moving the decimal place around. We're just putting it into a standard scientific notation form. Okay, so this guy here, um, we're making this number by going from this to this bigger. If that's getting bigger, this has got to get smaller. Otherwise, the aren't going to be the same. And how, how many does it get smaller by? Four, because we moved it four places. That's why it goes. Let's go back up to here, number one. Okay, we go from uh, what's that, 45,000 down to 4.5. That number is getting smaller. So that means this has got to get bigger. Otherwise, they're not going to be the same. This guy here, we're going from 2,000 down to two, getting smaller. So that means that's got to get bigger. But because it's a negative exponent, when it gets bigger, it gets more positive. It gets more positive by how many places? Three. That makes it negative two. Okay, let's look at this guy down here. Okay, so that's a really small number. And what is it doing when it goes to here? It gets bigger. Okay. That means if that gets bigger, this has got to get smaller to compensate. It gets bigger by how many places? One, two, three, four. Okay. That gets bigger by four places. That means this has to be smaller by four places. Makes it negative 11. Now, this is trickier than these guys. Because this is basically going well, we got to modify both the numbers to correspond to the scientific notation standard. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Let's. Okay. So, how do you guys feel about the scientific notation? Science and engineering uses horrendously large numbers, horrendously large or horrendously small numbers, and everything is converted to scientific notation. So you've got to be able to interconvert between the two. Now, all of you, theoretically, 99% of you are going into Chem 400. They're going to use this stuff all over the place and very fast. So you need to be very comfortable. Now, we're going to be using this throughout the rest of the semester. The whole semester we're doing this, whenever we do any kind of quantitative problems. Now, we're going to be doing a bunch of quantitative problems and then we're going to do some other things. And then toward the end of the semester, we're going to get back into heavy duty quantitative problems again. We get into stoichiometry. And again, all this stuff is going to come back into play. But you need to be more comfortable being uh, converting back and forth. OK. All right. Our world, except the United States, um, uses something called the metric system. And the metric system really isn't the metric, called the metric system. It's called the SI system. And SI is French for system, systemic international. In other words, it's internationally agreed to on these uh, prefixes and, and uh, quantities. Um, and you've heard of these before. You know, in, in computer lingo, we talk about gigabytes and terabytes and petabytes and, and all this junk. Okay. That is SI units. We also talk, talk about milliliters. We're talking about wine, 750 milliliters to a bottle, uh, centigrams, centi, uh, cents in terms of money, uh, um, uh, nanograms in terms of uh, drug 
um, allocations and stuff. So you hear these prefixes and suffixes a lot. And we're gonna be using these a lot in this class because it's a science class. We're not gonna be using the imperial system, which is gallons, pounds, ounces. Um, it's a very archaic system that's very uh, inconsistent in a lot of it. For example, you can have a dry ounce and a liquid, liquid ounce. What's the difference? What's the difference between a dry ounce and a liquid ounce? Weight? <laughs> yeah, one, one's a volume and one's mass. <laughs> Yet they're both called ounces. <coughs> excuse, excuse me, how inconsistent is that? That's silly. In the SI system, it's called kilograms and liters. <laughs> Not ounces and ounces. And back uh, in the 80s, um, we had a horrendous push under President Carter to convert to metric system. And President Reagan came in and he said, have a nice day. Uh, we're spending our money in other places. Stop the conversion. And we were almost there, in my opinion. We were almost there and we just stopped. And <sighs> we are still mired in the old imperial system. Today I was I was at the REI with my uh, I have a, a e-bike and I was converting my uh, app that uh, reads the the system I had to convert it from kilometers to miles you know and you know so I'm like why do I even have to do this why isn't the world in all in metric or SI units but <sighs> a number of years ago quite a few years ago now there was a horrendous error made when we were landing on Mars. And the error was imperial versus metric system inconsistencies. And some engineer used some weird imperial measurement instead of the SI measurement system. And we were off. And we ended up blowing lots and lots and lots of money on equipment in time because of the system that person used. <sighs> Very frustrating. Anyway, the cool thing about the SI system is based on units of 10. And um, by the way, just as a side note, there's some really interesting videos on why our time is not metric. <laughs> our time is not metric. Internationally, it's not metric. Everything was this, except for time. What does that tell you? It's like Star Trek kind of thing. Okay, um, however, the SI system based on um, units of 10, and they ha all have uh, suffixes and prefixes based on the, the, the units of 10. And this is kind of the line. And these are some of the ones that I want you to ignore. Um, Uh, Petra is used more and more now in the, in the, uh, you'll probably hear that, um, you hear it in Terra all the time now when you, when you go buy a, a laptop or something, it's got terabytes of uh, data storage. No one ever talks about petrabytes, but they are, um, NASA is actually taking pictures that have uh, the resolution uh, of the picture ends up being in petrobytes. So it's very starting to come into uh, more and more use. But basically, um, the ones in the middle here are the ones you'll hear a lot of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, milli, semi, deci, deca, not so much this guy. Uh, kilo, mega, giga, tera, those are pretty common. And basically, um, the um, the SI system has got a uh, an associated um, unit with it. When I say the unit, I mean an orders of uh, ten uh, associated with it. Deca's got an order of one, uh, kilos three, megas six, gigas nine, etc. Um, uh, milli is negative three, nano is negative nine, micro is negative, you know, you'll hear these a lot. Um, in, the, in the medical field, you'll, you'll particularly, you'll, you'll be working with these a lot for all of you um, pre-med people. 
Okay. Um, all right. When we're converting from one to the other, um, we want to convert that to kilometers. Okay. Kilometers are, are 10 cubed. So we want this number. We want this number of a 10 to the 3 by it, okay? which is sort of scientific notation. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, um, we're going to convert that number here to a, uh, a unit of 10 to the 3. Now, if it's if the decimal point's here and we convert it, it's not going to be 10 to the third. It's going to be 10 to the squared. Um, if the decimal point is here, it's going to be 10 to the zero. If the decimal point is here, and we convert it, it's going to be 10 to the third. Um, Mr. Ferguson, we can't see what you're writing again. You can't see that? We see that, but if you were writing before that, um, we don't see it. He was just putting dots on the uh, 5,000 meters. So they're like oh, small underneath yeah, it. They're really. There we go. Let me, nice. let, me, let me jack this up here. Can you see the dots now? Yeah. There we go. Sorry about that. And keep, keep me on track, you guys. Keep me, please. You know, what you just did is perfect. <laughs> perfect. Okay. Because I don't know where you can't see it. Okay. So let me just um, redo this again. Okay. So to, to go to kilometers okay kilometers remember is a 10 kilo is 10 cubed okay so we got to convert this number to something 10 cubed and then we can make this a kilo number go ahead okay so if the decimal point is here it's not going to convert to 10 cubed. The decimal point is here because this is going to be 500 times 10 to the 1. If the decimal point is here. This is going to be 50 times 10 squared. The decimal point is here. It's going to be 5 times 10 cubed. So that's what we want. We want the 10 cubed because we want it in multiples of these guys here. So kilo is going to be here. We want 10 cubed. So that means it's going to be a five. Oops. And as soon as we have the 10 cubed, and this is meters, as soon as we have the 10 cubed, we can substitute kilo meters or kilometers or So we need to think and, and notice also with the SI units, they're in multiples of three most of the time. When they get very small or very large, it's in goes by threes. Notice uh, right about okay, from here on and here on, it goes by threes. In between that, it goes by ones. So for example, here, if we were, um, I'm saying take this and convert this to millimeters. Okay. Millimeters are negative three. We want that. Right? Okay. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we move this over one place, it's going to make it negative one. Two places, negative two. Three places, negative three. And that's what we want. So it's going to be 4.677 times 10 to minus three. 
now once we have the minus three meters, we can take and make that a milli meter. Okay. Um, let's not do B because it's a goofy, you're not going to see that much. Um, this U is really not U. It is a microgram effect. Okay, so um, we want micrograms. Micrograms are 10 to the minus six right here. So how can we convert this guy to a minus six? Well, if we, this number is a minus six, minus seven, is smaller, smaller by units of 10. That means if we make this number bigger by 10, we have to make this number here smaller by 10. That means we're gonna make it converted in one decimal place. And of course, we just put the zero up front. And that should be the G Um and then once 10 to the minus six Gs, we're going to do microgram. Could okay. I ask a quick question, please? Of course. I'm not sure if this is related, but you mentioned that the suffix for the scientific notations has to be between one and nine. Now, yes, and we're not saying these are in scientific notation. And you're absolutely right. So if, if we were to convert these to scientific notation, that would be correct. So is this insight proper scientific notation based on your just question you just asked? Sorry, what was that? I said, you're right. So is this improper no scientific notation here? No, it's not. Correct, why? Because uh, the suffix is zero and it has to be at least one. Exactly, exactly, perfect, perfect answer. So all we're doing here is we're not saying we're converting into scientific notation. All we're doing is we're just converting from grams to micrograms. Yeah, I understand. That's why I wasn't sure if it was related. Thank you very okay. much. So, so let's let's continue your thought. That was a really good good point. Okay. So is this, and then once we convert to micrograms, see this is a much nicer looking number, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. And is that improper scientific notation? No. It would be like that. Yeah. Yeah. But is that an awkward number, 0.4454? Yeah, for sure. Is it an awkward number? No, yeah, yeah. I like the first one better. Yeah, so do I. So I would I would recommend keeping the original one rather than converting the scientific notation. My opinion, scientific notation version of that is awkward as heck. Ah. <laughs> we don't want awkward. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, but that's a really good point you made there. You know, is and just 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 dump your dump your thoughts out, okay, loudly. Because other people are gonna want to, you know, go, oh, that's a really good point she made. Okay. So you guys don't be shy enough. Don't be shy. All right. Um, all right. Is this going okay? Is this making sense the way I'm putting stuff? It is to me. Is it reasonable? Okay. Well, now on your uh, homework, um, I have lots of practice of this stuff. So, and I'm going to be giving you even more practice. So, okay. So, we're going to take this guy. We want to convert it to milligrams. Milligrams, okay? Not micrograms, milligrams. Now, milligrams is times the minus three, right? Okay. 
Okay. Um, so that means we want this guy is going to be kilograms, right? All right. So we need to convert this guy to that guy. Okay. So what have we done to 1.148 when we made it over to 0 0.01148? Well, we've gone two places, right? That means the exponent is going to change by two places. Because we made the 1.148 smaller, that means the negative 5 has to be bigger by 2. So that means it's going to be bigger by 2. Okay. Um, and then once we get the 10 to the minus third grams, we can substitute mg or milligrams for it. Okay, and that's going to be micrograms. Micrograms are million. This is incomplete. This should be. Some reason or other, this part was left out. Let's just can't skip that. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go on to. Are there any questions about um, um, this? Is converting between SI prefixes? We're still converting, going from uh, something to something. And remember, um, Okay, outside of the green, to the left and to the right are by threes, inside are by ones. So again, that's going to be how many decimal places we move things over. Okay. So when we want to convert, now this is a cute technique. Um, You look at the prefix and you say, okay, which prefix is larger? Okay, so you're going from one prefix to the other. In this case, is mega to kilo. Okay, which is larger? Well, mega is larger than kilo. The difference is 10 cubed. Nano to kilo. Okay, the difference is. 12. And the smaller one is going to have the bigger number. For example, this is smaller here. The smaller one is going to have a bigger coefficient than the larger one because we have to, they have to be equal. The difference between them is this difference here on the exponents. Okay. Nano versus kilo. Nano is a billion, kilo is a thousand. Okay, the difference between these two is 12. And which is smaller, the nano, that means it's gonna have 10 to the, difference between the two exponents, 12. So these guys and again, this is smaller, larger. Because it's so life isn't normally like that. Normally we've got coefficients in front, you know, like 1.3. Okay, let's convert 1.3 terameters to mic micrometers. Okay, well, the difference here is 
18. And which is smaller. The micrometers are smaller than the terameters are huge. <laughs> that's that's a thousand billion <laughs> meters. That's really a lot. Um, and then we're just going to take this guy and it's going to carry over. So we have 1.3 times 10 to the 18 micrometers is equal to 1.3 terameters. So 1.3 is on both sides. The changes are the decimal units, sort of like scientific notation. Okay. So we have a gram, which is, remember, exponents of zero are equal to one. So that's really 10 to the one. Okay. And a microgram is a million. So that's 10 to the minus six. The difference between the two is six. And the microgram is smaller. And then this guy here, is represented on both sides. So we have 4.52 times 10 to the seventh mic, and again, micrograms. And one last thing I want to mention on today's lecture is on where we are. I mentioned this earlier. I was really on my soapbox about this. Um, the metric system or the SI system is used in the world, except in the United States for nine non 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 scientific contexts only. Scientists in this country and engineers use the metric system or the SI system. Cooks and everyone else, we use pounds, inches, yards, quarts, blah, 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 blah. Now, I, I cook big time. And um, <laughs> a lot of the stuff that um, I've done over the years has been um, uh, the chemistry and cooking. So I've done a lot of classes actually on chemistry of cooking and uh and so i i bounced between what should i use the metric system in my cooking classes because it's a because it's a, listed as a chemistry class not as a um, uh, home economics class it's a chemistry class or should i use the uh, it's called imperial system actually not unit system Um, should I use the imperial system or the metric system? And I go back and forth. And so, anyway, um, I personally like the SI metric system horrendously more. These are the standard units. Um, we'll be talking about these two, a little bit of this in this class. Predominantly mass, mole. We haven't talked all about a mole. A mole is, um, is, a, uh, is a number, just like a dozen, only it's, it's much bigger than a dozen. It's, it's, uh, remember that Avogadro's number I talked about at the very, very beginning, 6.02 and 10 to the 23rd. That's how many are in a mole. Um, we're not going to be talking about amperes. That's a Kim 400. Kim 400. And we're going to talk about this a little bit, but not as much as Kim 400. Okay, so that's what I want to cover today. Um, now, this is going to be a typical lecture. Um, uh, theoretically, I only have 50 minutes based on or if you look on the schedule, but I usually go over that. And um, we're going to be talking next week. We're going to be moving into something called a workshop, 
and the workshop will be lots and lots of practice on what we talked about in lecture. Okay, so what do you guys think? First lecture. Is next week going to be Monday and Wednesday from now on? Correct. Every week is going okay. to be Monday and Wednesday. The problem is uh, Labor Day is on a Monday. So what I'm going to do is I'm, going to, I'm just going to kick it over to Tuesday. So it'll be a Tuesday, Wednesday. Other than that, it'll be Monday, Wednesday, though. At five o'clock. Okay. Professor, the uh, measurement chart that we were just going over, are we going to have access to that? Or is that something we mean on your test? On your test? Not this one, the one with, yeah. like on tests, and yeah, I guess on quizzes and stuff. That one, basically. <laughs> um, no, some of these you're gonna have to memorize. And the ones I want you to memorize are, Those. The ones I didn't X out. Oh, the ones that are not X'd out? Correct. Okay. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for asking. That. In fact, um, could you send me an email and I'll put a chart together on um, on uh, notes for the yeah. that I'll allow you to have. Okay, thank you. Oh, if we can get an email, so I was just gonna ask if you could pause on the chart so I can copy it into my notebook, but um, I, I'll just ask for it as well through email. Okay, okay. Now, um, I'm going to um, print off this OneNote. I'm not printing it off, I'm gonna save it as a PDF file. Uh, yeah. So you'll have this, the PDF file, plus the video. Thank you, appreciate it. Because I want it to be as, as, as meaningful as possible. Okay, so we are going to end this.